But for those of you who don't know, I am going to court because Onision filed a protective order against me. Sky! What, Greg? I'm a banana! You're a what? I'm a banana! What happened to your clothes? I'm a banana! There's very few people on the internet that, I, that I've lost every shred of respect and dignity for, and Onision is one of them, ladies and gentlemen. Onision, uh, talking about the fucked up shit he does and what makes him just so pitiful. Not that that's brave or anything, because that's his entire pathetic existence now. He just exists to be made fun of, just an internet punching bag. He's like a fucking blobfish, and just cursed to be a loser and be pointed and laughed at. And he constantly just fuels that fire, so that way people will make fun of him, so that way he gets views on his videos. Gregory James Jackson, better yet known as Onision, was a relic of the past. An American online YouTube personality who can be best described as, hold on, let me check my notes here the most controversial YouTuber. That's, that's putting it just a bit lightly, but you get the idea. Now, I have made countless upon countless videos on the man, the myth, and the legend himself, but I never really took a deep dive into him as a subject. Sure, I made fun of him in the past by reading all three of his, uh, books, but I never really took a deep look at his character on YouTube. So that's why this video is here today. Join me as we take a deep dive into the murky backyard water of Gregory Jackson, aka Onision's mind. But the important question is where to start. I think the best course of action is to act like a therapist and start this story from the beginning. James Jackson was born in Oregon, the hometown of rivers and lakes, I guess? I, I don't know, I'm not American. Anyways, James Jackson was born on November 11th, 1985, and was born to a happily married couple, who would later divorce two years later due to his dad <clears throat> committing sexual crimes against a minor. Huh, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, I see. Now, it's been speculated that this would be the Nexus event in his life for him being who he is today. Essentially creating a bad ending scenario for him as both a content creator and a human being. And it's pretty insane to think that this all started well from when he was two years old. I've never went through a parental divorce, but I'd like to make a gigabrain observation that it wouldn't be easy on an individual. <laughs> But back to his YouTube journey, where did he start? Well, Onision started in the good old days of 2006, when the Nintendo Wii was released. God, I am old. Anyways, James would create one of his first channels, aptly named Onision. This would be the genesis for his YouTube career. Because after this, he would upload a variety of videos. Videos like... Cat spraying. In the early 2000s, YouTube was a weird time, I tell you what. But none of these videos would be his magnum opus, his hit album that would set him on the radar of everyone on YouTube, quite like a video titled Banana Song. This video miraculously garnered more views than most pop songs coming out today. But this video, as uh, creative as it was, gained the attention of the most powerful entity on this website, the algorithm. Because this video hit the algorithm in the right way, it managed to set Onision on the map and got tons and tons of people to acknowledge him. For better and for, <clears throat> well, obviously worse now, he became a YouTube star overnight. But this, unfortunately, would be his peak. One that he would never be able to reach again, no matter how hard or how re-uploaded he tried. Because after this, his life would not only take a plunge, but a nosedive into a swamp infested water of irrelevancy and controversies. Controversial, a statement or general idea inciting or actively provoking arguments between the arrogant and the idiotic. One of the few instances in which the arrogant have the ability to take the moral high ground 
though not often. This can probably best describe Onision as not only a creator, but as a human being. Now we all know that Onision is a bad guy, but why? Well, for a lot of reasons actually. Just to name a few, he blamed his ex-wife for stealing his belongings, which she never did. He brainwashed and mentally abused his girlfriend at the time when she was having a seizure and an episode of acute memory loss. He would also force another girlfriend to have unprotected sex with him. And he also killed his pet tortoise named Reptar. God, poor, poor, poor animal, man. The iceberg doesn't stop there. It actually gets worse the more you dig deeper. You'll find disturbing stuff about his views on depression and abuse. Now, I know everybody is entitled to their opinion, but when you have a dumb take like this, with no knowledge of how to handle abuse, th then you don't get an opinion for being an idiot. There's also the Christina Grimmie situation, where he would speak out and deliver one of the dumbest takes I have ever read on this godforsaken website about a YouTuber who was unfortunately killed during a concert. Oh yeah, and for you nature conservationist and you hippies out there, he also tried to cut down trees in a protective wildlife area in his backyard. D don't worry though, he thankfully paid the price. I in court, of course. Now look, Onision is a bad dude to the bone. He was always a bad apple since the very beginning, and it is reflected in his content. There are clues and hints that his content was and always will be controversial. And I think the main reason why he's always controversial is because he is desperate. He knows that controversy and drama makes for good content, and he doesn't care if he needs to self-deprecate himself just to make his daily buck. But the reason why this is a problem is that he involves innocent people and brainwashes them for his own benefits. Girlfriend, wives, friends, or even other YouTubers. Onision is a very despicable person. But surprisingly, a smart content creator in the sense that he knows what gets clicks and views, despite his methods involving him being the bad guy of said content. But how about we take a deep dive to his content structure and see what makes it not only terrible, but terribly smart. So we all know that Greg's content is very troublesome, but it's also smart if he's the type to think any publicity is good publicity. Now I know you mentally threw up in your fucking mouth at the mere mention of me calling Onision or Greg a smart guy, but believe me it's not a compliment. His content is very, very controversial and clickbaity. One look at his titles and hell, even his thumbnails and you can see that from the very beginning he uh, wasn't trying or thinking his content out. He doesn't really know what to do after he has an idea or a video title for a video. He just wings it and tries to make a script. Remember, this is a man with a combined total of 3,765,272 subscribers and his newest content was about a fucking Mario doll. That was also like two or three years ago, so I mean... The idea faucet is uh, is uh, running low. But back to his content. Onision likes to categorize himself as a comedy channel, which is very ironic because instead of him making fun of stuff, it's people making fun of him instead. His content, and by default his character, is very immature. Ranging from fanfiction shit a 12 year old would look up on their first time on the internet to uh, whatever the fuck this is. And if you thought you could escape controversy surrounding him by watching his content, then you're very wrong because his content is essentially ground zeroes for his endless well of controversies. Controversies like a now deleted video of his ex-wife suffering from a seizure. He just does the normal thing and films it. Yeah, you know, the normal everyday thing that some normal person would do. Now, it's speculated that this was fabricated, but I don't know for certain, so I'll just keep it at that because I am not ready to dive deep into that rabbit hole just yet. Speaking of rabbit holes, how about we dive deep and see for who Greg makes his videos for? Like his demographic and his fans, if you can even call them that. Now, we already went over Greg's content structure. But for this part, I forgot to mention one vital thing. His content has no personality, or rather, too much of his personality in it. 
It's very egotistical driven, which means he is the center of the video and acts like he is the center of the universe and everyone around him are just peons and peasants to him. Why is this important? Well, it's because a majority of his fans aren't really his fans. He's created this disconnect between him and his fans and created this holier than thou mindset with his content that he made himself an unlikable jerk. Circling back to his content and his demographic, I'd like to believe that a majority of his fans are kids from the ages of 11 to 16, 18 at max. And this is a huge problem considering that Onision is uh, a 36 year old man still making content like this. And considering his track record with kids and young adults, someone might want to put him on some restraining orders on schools when he's around. I'm just saying. Yes, he is old and he makes content for younger people. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, but the matter of what type of content you're making for them. A comparison. I know PewDiePie doesn't make content for kids per se, but he does make contents for young adults and, well, pretty much everyone of every age. He knows his audience isn't dumb or stupid and doesn't treat them like trash. He also knows that people are there for his personality more than the video. Or sometimes it's a combination of both, like his philosophy videos. He also donates to charities, plays with fans, gives shoutouts to smaller creators, and so on and so on. All this, and he's only 32. And has stayed married, unlike our kombucha-covered emo man. Obviously, comparing PewDiePie and Onision is like comparing a PlayStation 5 controller to a boomerang PlayStation controller. They both work, but one is a hell of a lot better to hold and to look at than the other one. I can list off a myriad of other creators who are far more memorable and way more better than Greg, but I don't want this video to be a super long 5 hour video of me talking about every episode of fucking iCarly or some shit. Now that we got done with a majority of the video, let's head on to the last part now shall we? Onision is a prime example of what someone desperate enough would do for views, monies, and attention. Because, let's face it, Onision isn't doing YouTube because he likes it or because it's his hobby. Onision has seen the height of internet popularity once before, and wishes to recapture that spark, that kindle flame that he once possessed. But by his own hands, his own grace, he made his journey and life an accusative one. A life where he must now ponder every action and choice he makes. A life where his only true friend is himself. And even then, your true self can bid thee the dunnest of secrets of thy own mind. Allow this man to be a lesson to all of those who seek fame above human morality. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video, and if you do, please leave a like, favorite, and comment on the video. And as well, share this video with friends on Facebook and Twitter, and I'll see you guys when I see you guys, which is hopefully real soon. But until then, take care.